Hello everyone and welcome back to my Transgalactic Trek in Elite Dangerous and in this episode we pick up where we left off in the previous episode in Sector HD 168917. Once again I am doing post commentary here and I'll probably continue that for the rest of the series unless something unless we get back to the more populated centers where there's more danger and mayhem. So uh, while we're exploring probably I'll continue this in order to expedite things but here you see me heading to some of the places that we had not explored in the previous episode in this sector and so this is one of those outer locations the T Tauri type stars that are orbiting the B type here you see I'm not gonna hit the big T Tauri that is the B star in this sector uh, instead I'm just gonna aim for these other ones that are orbiting the A star uh, not the eight. It's not as a B-type star, but it's the center star of the system. Just a just a reminder: the T Tauri type stars are nascent stars. They're new stars, just beginning to ignite, if you will, and so their uh, their type is not necessarily solid. Anyway, uh, so the center star and the nearest planet to it have been discovered already, but it looks like I might get credit for the rest of these if I can get back to civilized space in time before somebody else brings the information back. Each of the t stars seem to have one planet, uh, one, um, I don't know, what did you call a planet or a moon? Anyway, uh, one thing orbiting them. That was interesting. But I headed next to another HD star because I noticed it had a black hole. An O-type star and a black hole, so couldn't miss that. But there were some stars along the way. For instance, this one. And so that presented some... I'm, I'm definitely in exploration mode at this point, so I'm going to be doing the exploring on most of these systems. And, uh, but I do want to try and get to that black hole quickly, certainly after seeing that on the map. I'm not sure I would have seen it on the map if somebody hadn't already discovered it. Uh, and of course, uh, all these HD systems have already been discovered. Uh, we're still in the area where O-type stars have all been discovered. I'm still trying to get out to the places where there might be some O-type star that had not already been found by somebody else. Anyway, so here is a dim star, but with prospects. It has a single planet, so I take care of that planet and then move on. Another dim star, but what does it have around it? If it's just asteroids, I will just continue on. But if there are planets, perhaps I need to take care of them. Uh, six astronomical objects. Will they be worth looking at? Come on, system map. Well, those are interesting little planets. Well, they're tiny, though. They're really tiny. They're like Mercury-sized things. Hmm. Since they're a binary pair, I decided to give the first, first pair a try, since uh, it's convenient to head out to them and just take care of both of them at the same time. But as we take a good look at the scene here, we notice there is a little red speck with a lot of specks in line around it. And I have noticed this as well. It, uh, it's a very suggestive site and indicates that maybe there is a... Uh, well, th I think there was another star in the system, right? There was a dim star in the system. And it seems to have a lot of planets, so I head towards that. I wasn't planning on taking care of the B star in this uh, system, but especially since it was a dim star, but if it's got those planets around it and it's so obvious, I can hardly resist. So out we go, trying to boost past this planet. And you can see there the dim star and its, its planets. It's an interesting sight, all of them in a row like that. And how many are there exactly? Well, a star and eight, uh, a star and seven planets, sorry. And we can barely call it a star, honestly. But here we go. Anything interesting? Icy planet. Now, I figure it's around a dim star, you gotta get icy planets. But hey, maybe the icy planet has some sort of 
underground ocean or something. You never know. Anyway, so taking care of those seven. And then I have to head back over to the A-star in order to get the rest of its plans because I skipped those. And since it looks like I'm going to complete this system as much as I can, I might as well get them as well. So, yep, finishing the rest of the planets off here. And that does it for this system. So, six planets around the main star and then seven around the auxiliary. Okay, on to the next system. Another dim star. Well, we're getting a lot of these in a row, but we are heading to an O-type with a black hole, so it's worthwhile. And I am definitely delaying gratification here, but this one has already been discovered by Zacchaeus. And so, congratulations Zacchaeus. And I'm just going to skip over this and go to... I wouldn't say to more fertile ground, it's definitely been discovered. But at least more interesting and novel ground for me. I haven't really hit that many O-type stars and I of course haven't hit any black holes. I don't even know how to discover a black hole. We'll see about that. Okay, 12 new objects. Well that's good. So it's not just the O-type in a black hole. But, of course, the question is, have they all been discovered? And yes, they have. D.D. Winters got the black hole. So that's, uh, well, congratulations, D.D. Winters, for getting that one. And that's the black hole system. Black hole's the B, B, I don't know if you can call it a star, B body. Well, uh, somebody else, I didn't quite catch that name, but uh, somebody else got one of the orbiting bodies in the system. I don't know whether to call them planets or stars. They're sort of halfway in between right now. Uh, anyway, there's the O-type with uh, D.D. Winters exploring that. So uh, I'm kind of in a bind. It's a very interesting system. There's a lot of stuff going on in it. So I decided to do some fuel scooping while thinking about how to go about this. And of course, I don't know exactly how to head for the black hole. Uh, I don't have the advanced discovery scanner and so I don't have a location on it. So I have to figure out where it is. Now this little uh, location at the corner of this orbit seems very interesting. But on uh, passing that orbit I see that it isn't so interesting. So I just decide to try for something else, scanning the skies. And eventually what I notice is is dancing stars. You can see one of them right there. And I suppose this has something to do with the black hole. Do not tell me anything about these. I have to if you know something about them, if there's a wiki, a forum, anything about what the dancing stars are actually indicate probably something to do with the black hole, but I want to leave them a mystery for now. I want to figure them out. And so uh, here's a dancing star and a companion. Now, why wouldn't the black hole distort? Uh, am I close to the black hole? No, I'm not. I can tell you that right now. But uh, why wouldn't the black hole distort more than just these two? These are not two stars in the system because I know the stars in the system, and uh, they wouldn't be these colors. So, so yeah, what what light are these two from, and why just these two? I don't know yet, and I don't want to know uh, without discovering it for myself, so let's just leave it at that. But yeah, dancing stars. Sort of a cool phenomenon. But ultimately I head towards, uh, well you can see the little yellow star drifting off over there, and uh, even though I'm sort of fixated by the dancing little ones, I, I give a little ping and discover this little location here. The question is, which of the many, many uh, stars or almost stars or almost planets uh, is this? There's so many of them in this system, I'm not entirely sure which one it is. It's got a lot of stuff around it though, a lot more than I saw my initial ping. This gonna, well it's not going to take a while because others have already discovered all this. 
so this is the 14th in the line and so it's but it's a so it's not around the black hole it's actually around the the main star the O type and it's that last one so I'm pretty far out but not far out enough to be around the black hole and indeed uh, DD Winters got all of these pretty lucrative system probably anyway I don't go through all of them even though I would get some more credits if I do but uh, time time is money money is time and uh, I, I'm short on time and uh, not uh, for my purposes not really short on money because I'm able to do what I want to do dancing stars dancing stars always distract me but I aim for those two little ones there the question is which which binary pair are they you can see uh, there was a binary pair they're both dim so they're either the two around the B uh, the black hole or they are the two around the O type star so I don't know which ones those two are but I head for them hoping that they're the ones around the black hole because then they'll help me locate the black hole interestingly the the dancing stars if I'm just headed straight like this they tend to maintain their position you can see it's wiggling a little bit but, but not by much why it's wiggling at all I'm, I'm still not sure and uh, that's an interesting thing to think about but uh, yeah it's just sort of wiggling right there possibly because I'm headed towards the black hole anyway I I hit another star here and but that's before I hit the two I was originally headed for and you'll notice that that star I just discovered was the B3 so it's actually the third one out from the black hole rather than the first two so we've got the first two there and then the third one out I just happened to hit before getting to the binary pair closer into the black hole so I continue on to the binary pair hoping that they'll be uh, they'll be closer to the black hole and therefore make it easier to find and so this is the center star of that binary pair now you'd think this would be pretty darn close to the black hole and maybe a little bit dangerous but not so much uh, this doesn't seem like a galactic sized black hole obviously and when you think about black holes uh, going in I knew that black holes are really tiny a uh, black hole with the mass of Earth is only one centimeter in diameter. A uh, black hole, the mass of the Sun, is only two kilometers. So it's not exactly the easiest thing to find, ex especially since it's not bright. Uh, there are the dancing stars, but I've, I I'm still not entirely clear. When something is like two kilometers in diameter, how does it uh, deflect the light of stars that much? Uh, and only those two. Very strange. But anyway, here you see I'm scanning, trying to find some sign of the black hole. Uh, is there other distortions? I mean, if we've got the dancing star phenomenon, is there something else going on in the system? Not so much, actually. Um, no indication whatsoever. So I have to come up with a different strategy in order to find them. And so after having gone through all the planets in the system to make sure that I don't already have a ping in other words I've already done the discovery scanner and pinged and made sure that I checked all the locations that I have pinged like that the question is how do I go about finding the black hole and ultimately the best way is to aim for the direct center of the orbits see if they are orbiting the black hole here I don't have a very good vantage point though so I get some distance away from the system scan a little bit more this doesn't really help though I really need to get uh, above the plane of the two stars we've got there and get a good look at them but really what I don't realize right now is they're just orbiting each other they're orbiting their very center their center of gravity and they're not actually uh, the star one and star two around the black hole aren't really orbiting the black hole they're orbiting the black hole together as a system but you see uh, right now the black hole is not in the center there so I'm aiming directly down hoping that the black hole is in that center somehow but it isn't that's that's not where the black hole is and 
And of course, if uh, it had been, the basic discovery scanner would have pinged it there. So I eventually realized this, and what I figure out is that the third star is probably more directly orbiting the black hole itself. And so uh, if I could aim for the center of its orbit, that would be a better location. So let's see here. Uh, you can see I've really gone up above the plane of these three stars now. And the curve you see there is the orbit of the third star out. Uh, you can see the two stars down there. And so I'm trying to aim directly in the middle of the orbit of the third star, hoping that the black hole will be close to that. And the technique here then is, of course, anything that gravitates will slow me down as I draw near it. And you can see I'm at full speed, uh, the 100% throttle, if you will, and I am slowing down. So there's something gravitating in the center of this orbit, and it is slowing me down. So in order to pinpoint it, I'm just going to have to, well, this is a little bit early for the discovery scanner, but hey, while, while we're here, we might as well try stuff. But yeah, uh, I'm just going to wait until I stop slowing down, and then I'm going to have to feel out in which direction I need to move in order to continue slowing down to be affected by the, by the black hole. And that's the trick here. I'm also not entirely sure how close to the black hole I would be in order to have certain gravitational effects. I don't know how big the black hole is. So lots of information not here right now. Don't know how close I have to get to the black hole in order to scan it. But uh, here, 19.2 uh, times speed of light. Ah, you see it going up there now. So I have to change direction, ultimately at 10.4c, 10.3. Is this close enough to the black hole? Yes it is. So we are now within 500 light seconds of the black hole. And so I get to, actually we're a lot closer. We, uh, it took about 100 light seconds it looks like. Not too sure about that. But anyway. Here we go, turning towards it. just under a hundred light seconds away and now I'm waiting to see if there's any sign of a scan and I actually have to get down to five light seconds in order to scan the black hole so pretty darn close now it has to be pretty heavy because it's got these stars orbiting around it so it's not a trivia black hole it's gotta be sufficiently massive but still, quite tiny. In physical size, it would be quite tiny. No little uh, glowing ring around it, nothing shooting out on this one. No sign of it at all, really. Um, no emissions, nothing. A little bit underwhelming, honestly, when you think about it. And no distortion effects. I mean, it's not like there's uh, all the stars are now dancing around or anything. In fact, uh, taking a good look around, I, I don't see any dancing stars at all. Interesting. Anyway, uh, with that done, I decided to continue on to another system. If you thought that I was just going to end on the black hole, no. I needed to get a sufficient uh, distance into the, into the galaxy for this episode, so on we go. So I've targeted another B-type star. But there are some of these along the way, and once again I'll take them as they come and see whether they are worth exploring. Well, this one's got seven new objects. At this point you gotta figure I'm, I'm sort of hoping that just asteroids, cause, but they're obviously not. There was one with a definite moon. Ah, but it's been discovered. Oh, nope. The star's been discovered but the uh, planets have not. Well, I decided if it's not good enough for that guy who discovered it before, it's not good enough for me. I'm sort of spoiled at this point by hitting an O-type star with a black hole around it. I want to get to some good stuff here. Okay, well, another dim star. How about this one? Give it a little ping. Anything under the size of Mercury is not worth my time, maybe. We'll see. 
Ah, this doesn't have anything around it except for another star. Okay, onward. Ah, now this is a good looking star, isn't it? What is that, F? Might be an F type. Well, two objects around it. Let's take a look at what those are. And looks like, well, there's uh, two stars close by to it. Looks like no planets. And those two stars are pretty easy to find, so I just go ahead and hit them. The other stars were not easy to find, so I, in my haste, and I'm getting a little bit tired right now. It took a long time to deal with that black hole, by the way. I spent about an hour trying to figure that thing out, so I condensed a lot of it here, but yeah, I was on the hunt for that black hole for about an hour. So yeah, a bit tired, and just wanting to get to that B-type. Well, there's two planets pretty close by to this one. Nothing to write home about, but perhaps I should give them some time. They're, I mean, uh, I say two planets, of course, a planet and a moon. So yeah, I decided to take care of them. Icy planet, nothing spectacular. Of these. Okay, well, it's it's not quite a red dwarf, is it? It's it's a little bit better than a red dwarf, right? No, but it's just a uh, well, it's an M class. Anyway, nothing interesting here, so onward. This one looks exactly like the other one, but it's got something interesting around it. It's got an ammonia world. And so that caught my eye. I took a good look at that ammonia world. It, it looks a lot like... I don't know if I've discovered an ammonia world at this point, but I don't remember one, so I, I thought it was a novel thing. And But it does... the, the texture looks a lot like something else I've seen uh, before. I've seen other planets that look like this. It's got little clouds. Ammonia, of course, uh, could be, I mean, a sign of life. There could be life on this thing. It doesn't look particularly green. It looks rocky with some clouds on. But then again, you know, uh, not all life has to be very green. Maybe they've got some other way of converting the power of the sun to usable energy. So yeah, just taking a quick look at the system map here. You can see uh, that Ammonia World is actually the second one in the system. So I take uh, the first one, there's Ammonia and Oxygen. That's that's pretty indicative actually. Carbon Dioxide, a lot of it. But a little bit of Oxygen, maybe something converting Carbon Dioxide to Oxygen. Just starting out. So I take care of the last one, which happens to be a rocky ice planet. And it's got a little moon around it take care of that too but nothing interesting like the ammonia world maybe something useful there definitely definitely possible to exploit that perhaps don't know if they'll eventually add something about that anyway on to the next system please let it not be an M type oh nope it's brighter okay good good times but does it have something around it? Yes, it does. Six astronomical objects. Ooh. Well, that's interesting. Oh, it's it's uh it's one of those. Well, maybe it's close in. I'm I've been looking for a a giant planet that uh, is close in a gas giant that uh, orbits in. In really quick time. Looks like that's the one. The others are all stars. Yeah, that's pretty close, isn't it? I think I finally found one of these gas giants. A proper Jupiter-looking gas giant. 
I, I don't know if the uh, gas giants around other stars that orbit in less than a day would really look like Jupiter. Seems like they might look very different. Of course, we've never actually seen one, so... Oh, and actually two of the stars are really close by, so I decided to take care of those quickly as well. But I'm mostly interested in that gas giant. So after peeing these, I take a look at what its orbital period actually was. And, uh, yep, there you go, taking a look at its stats, hydrogen, helium, but most importantly, 0.4 days. It goes around its star in 0.4 days, so yes, it's one of those gas giants that orbits really quick, quickly around the star. Uh, it could go faster. I could find one that goes faster, and we'll keep an eye out for that. I also take care of these, little, uh, these three planets that are orbiting not only the center star, but also number two and number three. And then on, I think, is this the B type finally? Nope, not yet. Uh, well, even just uh, doing post commentary during this video, I'm I'm waiting eagerly for the B type, so I'm sure I was anxious to get there then. But five new ob astronomical objects. I know most explorers probably don't even bother with these things, and actually these are not worth bothering. They're like Mercury style, so I just passed them up. But I'm probably doing a lot more than most explorers do. Most of them probably just focus on the nice big stars like this one, B-type, or above, and uh, to get most of their credits for this. Well, there's three objects around it. What does it look like? Well, this one has not been discovered. And actually, we've had a shortage of that. Uh, even out here, the B-types have generally been all discovered. And this it's got a healthy system around it. So yeah, it looks like uh, maybe I'll get credit for it if I can get back to civilized space in time. And so that's... That's a relief, finally finding something that I can get credit for. Uh, we've seen some interesting sights in this episode, black holes and all, but uh, nothing I would really get credit for discovering. But this, I get this planet, perhaps. Lots of ring planets around this system. You can see another one here. Not the most colorful rings, but uh, rings, a ring is a ring, and it uh, does make for a distinctive sight. So, I take care of the first three here. But I am going to leave the other ones, which will take a little bit more exploring, for the next episode. And so, yep, I think I will leave it uh, at this star. And so we've done a black hole, another O-type star, and we are around 2,000 light years in. And we will continue on in the next episode, hoping to find some interesting things, but mostly trying to get into a space where I'm going to be able to make more new discoveries instead of hitting systems that everybody else has hit before. Alright, and we've started on that track here with this system. So yeah, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.